The government watchdog group Judicial Watch reports the number of voter registrations in several counties in some swing states exceeds 100 percent of the eligible voters in those counties. One America's John Hines has more from Washington. What seems to be going on with these ghost voters that Judicial Watch has discovered, sir? And so we looked at 37 states and we found that uh, 29 of those 37 had counties with 100 percent higher voter registration than citizen voting age population. And so of that, we totaled 353 counties in those 29 states uh, exceeded 100 uh, percent voter registration. Uh, is, it, is it fair to say, uh, Mr. Noville, that you feel that dead people should not be voting? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, even more precisely, they shouldn't be on the registration list, too. Yes, they shouldn't even have the chance to, to, uh, to get a ballot, to be honest with you. And uh, uh, They should be we've disenfranchised, been suing... in other words. <laughs> yes, yes, we definitely want to limit the voting of, of the registration of the deceased and, of course, people that no longer live in the state. We've gotten reports from people that have moved to Washington, D.C. and other states that are still getting vote by mail ballots from California. And, uh, and that's sort of the new universe we, we're living with now post-COVID is uh, there's been a big push to re rewrite all the election laws. What potentially impact would this have, say, in a presidential election, do you suppose? Well, I mean, it certainly gives you a, a universe of votes that you need to look at and realize you know, did these people vote? I mean, it's sort of a litmus test to sort of do a sample of voting or voters to look at. Did this person that's on the Social Security death index, did he or she receive a ballot? Uh, there are two sources of the data that we often look at, and that's a national change of address database that the Postal Service compiles and the Social Security death index. And that'll tell you largely on a rolling basis who's passed away. And so that will give uh, the litigants, the litigators, uh, that are bringing these cases on behalf of the campaign, a universe of voters to look at and say, objectively, did this person receive a ballot? If so, how did it get cast or, or who cast it and did it get returned and then it get counted? Of course, you know, unfortunately, once it gets counted, it's in the universe of votes. And so you can't really pull it out. And so that's sort of one thing they would be looking at. And you found, Judicial Watch found, that there were approximately how many uh, ghost voters in the country after running in 29 states? If you look at the 353 counties that we identified with 100 percent plus uh, registration, we found 1.8 million, uh, adding all those up together. Since you have found, Judicial Watch has found some 1.8 million ghost voters in 29 states, what sort of problems could those pose in a presidential election? And is the president perhaps within his rights or on this basis uh, well advised to be questioning the results in some of these swing states, do you suppose? Uh, yeah, I mean, first, with respect to the president's rights, I mean, the Constitution contemplates this, federal law contemplates this, you know, everyone would like to not have election issues, but I mean, the president's perfectly within his right. And honestly, it's it's a public service to get to the bottom of this, because if Biden's a winner and, it, it, you know, he seems to be well ahead in the uh, popular vote, if, if he is indeed declared the winner, the people need to know that he had a legitimate election. But if not, we need to find out and we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. too. That's the bigger problem is, you know, is this going to happen every two years or four years? With respect to uh, what is sort of the practical problem of of having so many voters on the list, it's sort of, for lack of a better phrase, it's the ammunition you need to conduct an illicit voting operation. And I'm not saying I've, I've confirmed that that's happened, but unless someone's registered, it, you know, it's hard for them to get a vote now. I mean, there's other, I guess, schemes that have been alleged that I haven't really tracked down, but, um, you know, you can't request an absentee if you're not registered. You can't request an absentee for somebody that you're going to vote for them unless they're registered. Russell Nobile, who is a trial attorney with Judicial Watch, thank you for talking to us on What America News, sir. Yes, thank you for having me. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.